the end of the night. Um, the end of the night. And also, this is an advent. I don't like that. Yes, it's an advent. Look up your head so I can be. Well, you know, it's a special week we got to do all the special stuff. You would join with me in the call worship. They brought the coals of the donkey to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the coal, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered them, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Let us pray together. Gracious God, as we enter this holy week, strengthen us to move beyond the festive parade of alms and to follow Jesus into the way of the cross.
first lesson for this Sunday is from the book of Psalms. It is the 118th Psalm, verses 1 to 2, 19 to 29. It is, and you'll all be glad to know this, one of the Egyptian halals. You can use that at work one day. Uh, this group of psalms uh, celebrates the victory of Moses over Pharaoh and leading his people to, uh, to freedom. They are also the psalms that are very much tied to Palm Sunday because of the sense of victory in them. Psalm 118 is special. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord, O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light to find the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. In Paul's letter to the church of Philippians, or the beginning in chapter 2, we, uh, we have what is called uh, the Christ hymn. Um, most folks think Paul didn't write this, but that it was a hymn uh, that was already used in the church uh, very early in its life. And uh, it declares what the early church believed about Jesus. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Here at the scripture readings for this Sunday. May God have his understanding. <coughs> As you all well know, allergy season is or never stop. Uh, when I started 
in this business not many years after the dinosaurs stopped roaming the earth. <laughs> or anyway, that's how it feels. <laughs> the Sunday that, that was the Sunday before Holy Week was Palm Sunday. Just Palm Sunday. It was a celebration of Jesus entering Jerusalem. People got palms. You got palms. There were cheers of Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Um, in Luke, there are cloaks, but in the Gospel of John, there were palms. So we took that one and ran with it. Palm Sunday. Kind of a big first century parade. It was a good day. Everybody was celebrating as they entered into Jerusalem. Mostly what came next was kind of not spoken about. It wasn't that people who had grown up in the church were not unaware of what the week would bring Jesus and that it would end with humiliation and cruelty and death on a cross. But Palm Sunday was a victory. As a matter of fact, in many Bibles, it says in dark black, right before you begin the lesson, the triumphal entry. Ta-da! As time went on, though, and it became more and more apparent that people who came on Palm Sunday who had always been involved in Holy Week services, remember those? Holy Week services? Classes on Wednesday? Communion Thursday, three hours on Good Friday. See, you don't remember because you remember than the dinosaur. As time went on, though, and the uh, world around us cared less and less for our observances, and most of us cared less and less for our observances, even Good Friday kind of got passed by. Monday, Thursday was okay because we got to give communion. And sometimes, sometimes we washed feet. But Good Friday, for some reason, was crossed off the mass. It was just too much to deal with. The first church I served at, the young people had a Good Friday morning service. It was lovely. It was wonderful. But it was not long after that that those things started to disappear. I've served several churches where they say on Good Friday people do private meditation. And if you believe that, I have a bridge you can buy in London. <laughs> Finally, the lectionary people, and I don't give them this credit very often, got smart. They figured if we kept Palm Sunday the way it was, you would like to know that this Sunday before Palm Sunday was Passion. They did away with that, and this Sunday now is Palm Passion Sunday, together. That means that preachers at churches who follow the lectionary get to put in the triumphal entry of Jesus and his defeat on the cross in one whole sermon. Next year, you can try. We preachers.
teachers do that because we know, and I hope you know, that it is essential not only to celebrate and yell hosannas, it is also essential that we spend time at the cross. Which is where no one wants to spend time at the cross. It is a frightening place. Last week's Bible study discussed crucifixion and discussed the horrors of that way of death. The cross looking up to the face of Jesus is not time people want to spend, but we must. We must because if we don't stay at the cross, then Easter becomes just another big party that has a little meaning or understanding behind it. There's an old gospel song that says you can't wear the crown if you don't bear the cross. So that's what this day is. A little celebrating, and then end at the cross. I thought it might be helpful then if we're going to squeeze both of these together is to use different scripture lessons that you are used to hearing on Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday or whatever <coughs> this is to help us focus a little bit better. We know the story of the triumphal entry, or at least we, we're, we're pretty sure about it in our heads. But we may not be as sure of it when we read Psalm 118. Even though much of what happens on Palm Sunday has its source in Psalm 100. And 18. While it was part of a group of psalms that celebrated Israel's victory over Egypt, it became the group of psalms that became tied very closely to the celebration of Passover, which makes perfect sense because that's how the Jews got out of Egypt was Passover. These psalms began to be sung as the pilgrims made their way up to Jerusalem for the celebration of Passover. It was also sung at the time in the temple when the lambs were prepared for Passover meals in people's homes. It declares a great celebration over the defeat of Israel's enemies. Blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Where once these may have been tied very closely to Moses, and in Judaism they still are, in Christianity they become words for Christ. Feelings for Jesus, that the final victory was in his hand. And that once again, God's people were saved. Now there's not a cult in it or a donkey. I'm sorry. We had read Zachariah for that. There's no cult or donkey. 
But there is certainly that sense of triumph in Psalm 118. As a matter of fact, when the Gospel writers wrote about that first Palm Sunday, and remember, they were writing many, many, many years after the events that happened, they found no better resource to think about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem than to use Psalm 100. It is an important reading. It is always there in the lectionary readings for Palm Sunday, but it usually is not used because it's not that great thing about colds and donkeys and colts and palms. But this year, for you, it is Palm Sunday. For the passion of Christ, instead of doing the reading, that is suggested for this morning, which is the entire passion story according to Luke. <coughs> I don't know if you have ever heard anybody read the entire passion story. This is chapter after chapter after chapter that is read out of one of the particular Gospels of Jesus' trials of his humiliation, of what he goes through on Good Friday. I heard it once, read all the way through the church. It's very overwhelming. Um, but uh, I chickened out and thought I could use Paul and his letter to the Philippians. As you know, the Philippians were very dear to Paul. It was one of the first churches he started in Europe. And he was not with them long, but they always remained faithful to him. And he to them. They write to Paul because they are having problems. They are having problems within the community of faith. And they're having problems from outsiders who are attempting to divide them or to cause problems. They want Paul to come back. They are positive that if Paul comes back and spends time with them and sets everything straight, everything will be okay. But Paul needs to come back. The only problem is that when the Philippians send this letter to Paul, he is in prison. We're not exactly sure where, because uh, Paul ended up in prison a few times. A lot of scholars think it was Rome. And if it had been Rome, Paul would never be able to return. Or was there to die. So Paul writes this letter to them, hoping to uh, set the record straight, to explain to them what their faith says to and for the situations they are in. And as Paul always does, he turns to Christ Jesus. He wants the Philippians to get some kind of perspective on the suffering they are going through. And he understands it as suffering. He doesn't diminish what they're going through. He doesn't say, suck it up, buttercup. He is, understands that they are fraught with doubts and anxieties and fears and, and afraid that they may lose this gift that he has given them. He shares with them a hymn of the early church. And in that, he makes it clear 
that the perspective they are supposed to have on their life was always to be in the same perspective as Jesus had gone through his. In the first part of the hymn, which is the only part I'm going to talk about, the ending is very exalting, all that good stuff. But the part I want to emphasize right now is the part that talks about what Jesus had to go through in order to be obedient to God. That is the emphasis of Paul. What should the Philippians be concerned about? They should be concerned about being obedient to God. Themselves, not to another group, but to God. What does Jesus do to live out that obedience? He tells us, first of all, that Jesus emptied himself to be human. that it was to be in human form, that God was to show what obedience was going to look like. They were not going to be asked to pull off miracles or live some extraordinary life by some super Christian up in the sky. Jesus emptied himself and became human like us. So like us, Jesus showed them what it meant to be obedient to God's call. And if that was not enough, and it wasn't, Jesus once again emptied himself even more to become obedient to God, even to death on a cross. That's what we see on the cross, is an obedient Jesus to God's call. It was now up to the Philippians, and I may add to us, how much are we willing to give up of ourselves to be obedient to God in Christ? That is the reason we don't only get to lay palms on a day like this, and that's why we have to spend time at the cross. We need to pray there, and we need to know what it is that keeps us from being obedient to God. As I said earlier, being at the cross is not a fun place to It is overwhelming when we see what Christ did to follow the call of God and how little many of us are willing to do. It's too bad we kind of gave up hope. Because the more time we have to think about and consider and look at all that Christ has done for us, we may have a little bit better idea about what we will be celebrating on Easter. 
trusted. Without time at the cross, Easter is just another celebration. Just another big day. When I was a kid, it meant you got a new hat and a new pair of gloves and new black and leather shoes. <coughs> And that was, and the dress. You guys did the dresses, so you got suits, right? <laughs> but it was a big day. Well, we're older now, and probably most of us are not going to get a new dress and a new pad and new gloves and pad and new shoes. Or a new suit. And that's okay. Because when we get there on Easter, we may actually have an idea of what we are celebrating. That Christ lived his entire life in obedience to God. And it is the life we are called to. And it is not an easy life. It's not just memorizing some verses showing off about how many Bible verses you know or how many times you go to church. It's how many times we are able to overcome ourselves and be obedient to God's call in Christ. Amen. God has given us his only child, Jesus Christ, as the way of our salvation. Let us then give generously as God has given to us.
Lord lift up the light of his countenance on you now and forevermore and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.